Let y'all come up in here. Gonna get to this. Don't ever talk to royalty about no fucking loyalty. That's a bullet put your name for one of your lanes. Good boy, Christopher Gallup, my boy. Give us that intro music. you guys that don't like profanity i apologize but i groove high groove that's that that's that intro actually he got a he got a couple good couple good songs couple good tracks he actually a really good artist Let's see i'm gonna play the intro for one of my favorite ones right here While we load this up for you guys, let's see how Facebook is letting this live go. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. So we got a toggle in between uh, the live video and sharing the screen. So I'll go back to that. Uh, Facebook is stopping me from doing live. So I'm doing this 100% on YouTube, which eventually, um, until we integrate video only software on our site, uh, we will be doing nothing but uh youtube so eventually most of my uh most of my business will be done strictly on youtube so if you guys are let that sit back there oh you guys can't even see it that's horrible uh that's that sucks but we won't worry about that then that was my little promo. So for you guys that don't know what today's video is going to be about, um, we're going to go over some of Blacks in crypto, uh, Black business, some of the speculations in cryptocurrency, as well as we are going to go over some of the stigmas that people have with cryptocurrency and how the Black community views those stigmas. Uh, I'm going to give you two things that you need to know. Uh, this is a $50 device. Uh, it is something that you can purchase at Best Buy. Now, there's going to be two kind of disclaimers with this. Uh, they are called My Passport. It's like $50 to $60, depending on when you catch it, when you buy it. Um, and it's a terabyte hard drive. So let's say your tablet or your computer, uh, which can't really show you the computer that we manufacture here because I'd have to move my whole device, which is another big computer. There's three computers right here. Each one of these computers has their own wallet. So I'm going to see if uh, if you guys can comprehend what cryptocurrency is. I'm going to give you a brief, brief, brief discussion of what cryptocurrency is. OK, so that you guys understand just basic Internet explanation. <clears throat> 
I might try to simplify these uh, definitions for you if possible, but I think some of them are just very descriptive for themselves. Cryptocurrency, a noun, because it's a thing. A digital currency in which encrypted technologies are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the, the transfer or transactions of funds operating independently of central banks, okay? Uh, for you guys that can't see my screen, I just read that straight off the internet. But so you guys can understand, cryptocurrency is a digital form of money. I want you to think of it like credit on PayPal. That's the easiest way to think of it. If you have no idea what cryptocurrency is, if you have no background in cryptocurrency, if you have no understanding of what cryptocurrency is, cryptocurrency is basically a credit like you would get from Western Union or PayPal. Uh, think of it as like a gift card. Gift cards aren't actually money. Remember that. Gift cards are a form of cryptocurrency. They're an encrypted transaction on a card that has no monetary value outside of where that card was purchased. Example, if you buy a gift card for your children on a video game, it has 50 real dollars worth of value in that game. However, you couldn't take that $50 and go to Walmart and buy bread, water, juice, and food. Cryptocurrency is the same thing. It's just become more broadly used and accepted because that specific card is accepted a lot more places. And it's accepted outside of a centralized thing, like a video game or a specific store. Like if you got a, a, a gift card to Bass Pro Shop or, or Walmart, right? You can't take a Walmart gift card and use it at JCPenney's or the gas station, unless it's a Walmart gas station. Now, just like a gift card is only usable and only good as the place that you purchase it, a gift card in a larger environment would be great, right? So if you have, for instance, a $10,000 gift card, right? And you have $10,000 on a gift card that's from Walmart. That's pretty much as good as cash because you can get everything at Walmart. Literally, you can get everything at Walmart or on walmart.com. There's very few things that you can't get, including petroleum cleaning products, uh, clothes, shoes. Now you can't get specific brands, but could you live your life off a $10,000 gift card? Yes, you can. There's actually a whole strategy of changing uh, Bitcoins and cryptocurrency into gift cards to make them monetizable. Um, and that's something else that we'll get really deep into really later in the purpose of that. But there's two things that you need to know before you buy any type of cryptocurrency, before you get into any type of cryptocurrency trades, you need to know these things. And let me do a harmless plug while we're doing this. Uh, so we're going to pause for a commercial. <laughs> I'm going to go on Facebook because I don't have a presence right now uh, on YouTube. I'm building that presence right now as we as we go. So give me a second. I'm going to go to my YouTube. Uh, I'm going to tell them why and then we'll get here and we'll go from there. So we'll say something like this. We'll delete all this. That was the advertisement, so we'll keep it short and we'll say the truth. Uh, for whatever reason, I made a post about Mark Zuckerberg and right after I made the post about Mark Zuckerberg, my live button went off. So <laughs> I don't know if it's speculation. I don't know if it's just built that way. I, I really don't know. So uh, Facebook has blocked me from going live. So, loophole, I'm on live YouTube. Boom. Important message. I'm going to try and make this short, sweet. I normally make longer videos on Facebook that are about an hour, 45 minutes long. I'm going to try to make this one about 15, 20 minutes minus the intro. And I know that's hard for you to get a lot of substantial information, but I know that I know the viewer attention span or time allotment is a lot lower on YouTube. So that's fine. Work with me. So we'll copy that, share that, and then we'll go to all my groups, share that. 
if you guys are interested in joining us and not going to our social media, which we're going to talk about right this second, but you want to just stay on Facebook and kind of stay informed. We don't post a lot there, but it is a great place to meet. Our social network uh, group on Facebook is Ka Currency Platform Group. Just search up Ka Currency Platform. We just ask two questions. If you can answer those two questions, honestly, then you're in. We only have a few hundred members, but I go for quality over quantity. Now, our commercial break is our social media platform. That is KaCurrencyPlatform.com. Check out the mystery. That's K-A-K-U-R-R-E-N-C-Y platform.com. As you can see from the homepage, this is about building wealth for generations. Financial security begins with an investment, and that investment is your time, your future. Uh, this is a community of like-minded people. All we post, there's no drama, there's no beefs, there's no tit for tats. It is all about positive news, black business, and this pro... Uh, community is backed by our cryptocurrency, the Ka Note, and it is a hundred percent, a hundred percent backed by precious metals, real estate, uh, as well as stocks. So we are the only cryptocurrency that will pay you out in cash if you need to. Cryptocurrency, we will pay in other cryptocurrencies, we will pay you in real estate, we will pay you in stocks or in precious metal, gold, silver, or copper. Uh, there are a couple asset backed cryptocurrencies, but they are what you can buy into. Uh, we do that as well, but they won't pay you out in that. So in other words, if you made $100,000 on their network, they're not going to sell you or trade you a house. How do we do that? Uh, basically, if you made $100,000, we deduct $1 from your account and give it to you in cash. You pay us a dollar for the property and we sell you or trade you the transaction of a property. Same thing with stocks. Uh, with stocks, we don't have to do any transaction. With real estate, you're legally obligated to do some kind of transaction for the county assessor's office. Uh, but with stocks, we just transfer the stock in your name. We make the purchase. We uh, send the stock to you on your behalf, and that's how we cash you out. So as you can see, it's almost exactly the same as Facebook for the people that are questioning what they can do, what they can't do. There's no private messaging. Everything is in the open because this is a business market uh, for private messaging. We just ask people to do, you know, right now we're going to work on getting that, but for the time being, until we can afford that upgrade, just email or say, hey, message me. Here's my phone number. And you can do everything as far as posting to groups, posting to markets, uh, developing opportunities. You can go and build, you can develop, you can create, uh, you can build as many things as you want on your business profile. You can set up your own account. And for everybody that sets up, uh, once we launch the exchange, uh, which you're going to see in news uh, and asset market, once we launch the exchange again, you'll be able to trade your cryptocurrency, sell them, uh, make private arrangements with cryptocurrencies that you already have. Uh, and you'll be able to go from there. So that's all we ask. That's all we validate. You can go and check out some pretty good news. There's some good reads. We post from other people's profiles. Uh, so you'll see stuff that we post from Nipsey Hussle, uh, stuff from Boyce Watkins, Jay Morrison, all that stuff. So that's the commercial and we'll get right into the information. So for you guys that now understand what cryptocurrency is or that are already in the know of cryptocurrency to validate some stuff for you. Uh, we are a black cryptocurrency company. Uh, that's the Ka currency platform started out as a precious metal exchange and mining. In other words, we manufacture now mining uh, computers and software for people so that you can totally integrate and build. Here goes one right here. Uh, so you can totally integrate and build your own mining rig at your home it's less than one Bitcoin. Actually, it's less than a quarter of a quarter of a Bitcoin from what it hiked up to today. Uh, but we custom make and alter existing material and hand make this computer and cryptocurrency mining rig for you. Uh, so this is a black manufactured company. I'm the owner. Uh, we have a black team that does this. We have black builders uh, and we build and develop that for you. As we're making this live right now, we are currently mining cryptocurrency right now, and this is instantly being converted into Bitcoin. Now, uh, let me get back to the right here. So we're going to stop sharing so I can show you guys this. Uh, this 
right here is something that everybody that has cryptocurrency, if you don't know, should have. Okay. Uh, this should be in a firebox or a drawer or a desk that's away from water, that's away from hazard, and that never gets put by any magnetic anything. So you don't want to put it by a magnet. You don't want to put it by anything like that. Now, this is the only endorsement you'll get from a non-black product from me because this is the one I use. Okay. This is called my passport. Now you can do this with a cheaper one, but I like something that's secure that can hold as much information as we want. This is called a portable thumb drive. Okay. Now for some of you guys that want to be super technical, my passport is a password protected one terabyte portable storage device. Okay. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Best Buy. That's where I get mine from. Now, when you get cryptocurrency, what happens is they give you a wallet. All right. Now I'm going to show you something, uh, my wallet, right? My exchange for the wallets or our exchanges, right? You're going to get something like this wallets and exchanges. Once you get a wallet, it will download an encryption key. Okay. That encryption key never changes, but it's very difficult. It'll be 10, 20 or 15 words random. It'll be like blue fish street left up Carolina target Kipsy, whatever. They're all random and it's generated by the system or wallet that you use. I personally use Exodus, but there are much better and cheaper, uh, wallets that you can use for stuff just generally getting into the market the easiest one for most people to get into is coinbase coinbase is very simple it's very basic i personally don't buy cryptocurrency i make cryptocurrency so i don't need to put my banking information my personal information or any of my names on anything online for cryptocurrency i make it Therefore, because I make it and trade it, I don't actually have to do any of that. So using Exodus, I can do that anonymously. I don't have to worry about governments. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't, I could just use Exodus and go. However, Exodus is only usable on the device you put it on. So my Exodus, for instance, may be on this tablet. That's it. It can't be moved. It can't be blah, blah, blah. Now you could put it on multiple devices, but then that's a security risk because if you have it on all of your tablets or devices or anything but your phone, if you lose it, you are screwed. That's where this comes in. However, Exodus is on here for me. This is password protected. Exodus is password protected and you can further put more password security on this device. If somebody stole this device, as long as you have it on here, and let's say a tablet, then you can have it on two secure devices. Obviously my tablet, password protected, my computer, if that's what I was using, password protected. This is a saving grace. However, since it's one terabyte, I literally can put every last single cryptocurrency wallet on the planet on here 57 times, maybe if not a couple hundred times, and I'll never lose it. And it's something that fits in your pocket if you had to go out the country or go to another country, you could wrap this up and put it into your bag and it's going to pass through customs. It's going to go wherever you have. And guess what? In that country, you could have $10 million right here. Same thing with your computer, but believe it or not, there have been instances where computers have been confiscated uh, from people going into different countries for other means. And it had nothing to do with cryptocurrency. And those people have lost cryptocurrency. So that's why I think a secondary backup and way to access your, your devices is fine. Now, some people are going to get on and say, but if you have Coinbase, you can put it on your phone. People hacking the phones all the time. People lose phones all the time. And there's this thing called phone cloning. Now, I'm not saying somebody's going to clone your phone, but if you had 10 or $50 million or $15 million or even $100,000, it's worth it for a hacker to clone your phone just to see what's on your cryptocurrency account. So you have to be aware of all of the security risks. But once you get outside of the security risks, let me show you what we're dealing with. I'm going to show you what the markets are doing right now. And I'm going to show you how these markets are building. Okay, so we're going to go to 
our handy dandy screen here. Now, we're gonna go to the current price of Bitcoin. Current price of Bitcoin is 13,000, okay? Let's get this number out. 13,000, okay? $13,200. Uh, less than a month ago, I believe, if we go to one month, Bitcoin at the end of the month was, let me see if I can click this chart and blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. I don't believe this chart is going to let me blow it up. All right, we'll do a year. So in the last year, Bitcoin in, let's see, where are we at? Let's start right about January. So that's the first of the year. Six months ago uh, in January, Bitcoin was at 3,000. Trying to find the first day of January. Give me one second. Right. Uh, that's the second day. It was at about $3,800. At this time, I told people to purchase, buy, 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 invest in making it, not buying it. But either way, if you bought it and then didn't make it, that's fine. But if you invest in making it, you have what I call positive residual income. You're always going to make money making something versus purchasing it. What's the difference? To make Bitcoin cost me roughly a couple thousand dollars. To purchase one Bitcoin cost me $13,000. You can see the, the variation in cost now. Now, if I invested at January that couple thousand dollars in one Bitcoin, I would have way more capital than I do now making it. However, that is a one and done. And I know for some of you guys, you're like, well, that's what I want is to make some money and get out. That's not actually what you want. You actually want the ability to make stable money. Stable money means that tomorrow I'm going to make money. The next day I'm going to make money. The next day I'm going to make money. And as long as I'm making it or manufacturing it, I'm always going to make money. Now, for you guys that understand steady wins the race, what would you rather have? $500 a week or one time a year, $13,000 minus whatever you paid for it originally. So this would be minus almost 4,000. So right off the top, my 13,000 becomes 9,000-ish, right? So now that's one time done, as opposed to $500 a week with the same amount of purchase. They both cost the same price-ish, but one is making me $500 a week and the other one is just a one and done. Who knows when that happens as well, because it can go up and down who knows when that happens? Now, if it goes down in price, my $500 a week will also go down in price. So that is the fair variant in the price adjustment. But one is going to guarantee to make me money for nothing. I don't have to invest anymore. I don't have to buy anymore. I don't have to do anything. It's just the solid boom, boom, turns itself on, runs this program. And as it runs this program, every green line that you see here, uh, there's white, which is the jobs complete. The blue is it actually running the algorithm. And then the green is it's actually accepted and sent me uh, Satoshis, or which is the variant of Bitcoin. So how we have a dollar and then we have change. Bitcoin has the Bitcoin and the change is the Satoshi. OK, so every time it sends me one, it sends me a Satoshi. Right now, today, I have gotten... 53 Satoshis on this machine and we have six running. Okay. So you guys can see why getting into mining is profitable while making your own machines is profitable. Why you should get into developing something like this. Uh, if you want more information, join our, this community is hundred percent free. doesn't cost you anything. It's melanated owned, black ran, black manufactured, the programmer is black, the developer is black, the concept owner, which is me, is black. Uh, and you will start seeing courses, which this will probably be one of the first courses uh, or introductions uh, on the courses tab. So I want to give you guys these lights, how the market is doing type thing. So you understand this. Now, this is $13,000. Now, this site is called coinmarketcap.com. I want you guys to realize there's a lot of things that people pass up in coin market cap. Okay. And one of the things that people pass up is here at the top. So we're going to blow this up. 
At the very top of the page, there is a breakdown of every last single cryptocurrency that is advertised known to man. Okay, we aren't on coin market cap because we don't uh, advertise to the open market. We are what's called a private coin or a private cryptocurrency because we are only for the users of our site. So if you're not a member of this site or the main currency site, you can't use it. It doesn't matter. It's only for our users. So one thing there is known on coin market cap, there are 2,290 different cryptocurrencies. That means this goes, uh, when we look at it like this, it goes from number one to 200, 2,290. Okay, markets. These are the places that you can buy cryptocurrency. So in other words, we could always put our market on coin market cap without listing our currency on coin market cap. Okay. The market cap, that is how much of every last single cryptocurrency on the planet with their current values, which is the price that they sell for, right? So we'll do this in order, the price that they sell for versus how much is in supply, okay? That is, now look at this number. If we sold every last single cryptocurrency on the planet for its current value, right? we would have 373,004,969,406 dollars. 373 billion, billion, okay? Let's look at something real fast. Let's look at the entire amount of money that the United States makes. All right, so gross domestic product, so that you guys know what this is, okay? The United States, as we are listing, is a country with 50 states covering a vast swap of, I don't know why they use that word, that's funny, North America with Alaska in the middle and north, Northwest and Hawaii extending the nation into the Pacific. Population of the entire United States, known population anyway, there's probably a bunch of people that aren't known, but known population is 325 million people. So to give you an example of how much cryptocurrency, our whole entire country in 2017 only made $19 trillion. Cryptocurrency as a whole is worth 370 billion billion. Now, once this number hits a thousand billions, that is a trillion. So at 999 million, the next million will put us, or the next billion would put us to a trillion dollars. Okay. Now this isn't even a quarter of a trillion dollars. It's really not. Uh, or it isn't a quarter of $19 trillion, excuse me. But this is enough money to give every last single, if we sold it all, this is enough money to give every last single United States American like $10 billion or $10 million. So if we sold all the cryptocurrency in the world to the rest of the world and just stayed here, we would be able to give out like $10 million to every last single person on this entire country, every single person. That is the value of cryptocurrency. That is how much value is there. Now, to give you a deeper understanding, okay, of how much money is in Bitcoin today, the 24 hours, so from 6 p.m. right now to 6 p.m. yesterday, $138 billion was transacted in trade, purchase, sales, exchanging, uh, buying, swapping, all of that. There was $138 billion. Let me put the camera back on myself so you can understand. Billion. We're not, we're not talking about a million. We're not talking about thousands. We are talking about billions of dollars. Billion. 
let me give you an example of how much different a billion is from a million. A million miles is around the world about four times. A billion miles would be back and forth to Mars about a hundred times. Let that sink in. Around the planet, a few times, a million. A billion back and forth to Mars a few times. It's a big solar system. Give you another example. A million dollars, okay, follow me. A million dollars, if you got it in hundreds, could fit in a backpack. It could fit in a really small backpack, a very small backpack. If you got it all in hundreds, you could put it in a backpack, okay? Real simple. $10,000, a stack. I, I give you a great, I'll give you a better example. Uh, $10,000 is about, in hundreds is about this wide, okay? 10,000. So if this was a backpack, it'd be about this wide. You need 10 of these to make $100,000, and then you would need 10 stacks of that to make a million. So we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So from here to here, that's not a lot of space. You can fit it in a backpack. Fit it in a duffel bag. Do it in, do it in movies all the time. Put a million dollars in the duffel bag. Boom, it's done. A billion dollars would fill up this entire room. And you would still be struggling for space. You'd be struggling. This room might not even be big enough. You might have to knock this wall down and put it in the next room and have some space in that room for your transaction. OK, so there's a big difference between a billion and a million. So when we're talking about one hundred and thirty eight billion dollars, that is enough money to fill up five banks. The average bank only has a couple hundred thousand dollars in it at any given time. Very few banks have more than one hundred thousand dollars because of bank robbers. If you have to make a purchase or get a withdrawal for more than one hundred thousand dollars, the bank will tell you seven days. They have to hire a carrier. They have to bring the money from a secure location, and then they have to give it to you in a secure fashion. You can't just go and get it. So I want you guys to understand that once we understand the dynamics of money, we have to understand how to get into money. There's some stigmas that black people have about cryptocurrency. Um, we were the last as a group to maybe get into cryptocurrency, maybe the Hispanics as well, but it's a, it's a tit for tat, like are they in, are they out? with us. So we're teeter tottering like this with Hispanics on, are we getting in crypto or are we not? However, Mexican banks have been heavily invested. The hell, the Mexican mafia is heavily invested in cryptocurrency. It's one of their main uh, transaction fees. And that was one of the first problems with cryptocurrency is that only people like the Mexican mafia were using it. And then it became globally accepted as soon as the United States government lets you pay your taxes in cryptocurrency. Once the government lets you pay your taxes in cryptocurrency, the price went from being 3000 to skyrocketing. And now that Facebook is getting into cryptocurrency, a cryptocurrency called Libra, uh, we are going to see a, a drastic jump. A, it might actually hit higher than $19,000. My uh, estimation was it was going to hit higher than 10000 And then once it broke through 10000 it was going to jump to 20000 I was exactly right. In January, I said, hey, look, this is what's going to happen. Cryptocurrency is going to be 3000 for a little bit. Then it's going to teeter totter at where it wants to stabilize for a long time, like four or five months. And then before the end of the year, it's going to hit 10000 Once it hits 10000 what happens is called a buying frenzy. A bunch of people buy it because it's going up and they don't even know why. They don't even care. Like, oh, I'm going to get it, got to get it, got to get it, got to get it. Once they get it, that causes what's a rocket effect. It just rides up the hill, which is why they say bull goes up the hill and a bear comes down the hill, right? So once you're in a bull market, it goes up. And once it goes up, you don't know when that bull is going to tire out and become a bear and tumble down the hill. But if you got in when I told you to at 3,000, you're, you're on a gravy chain right now. My All of my cryptocurrency is up 69 to 75% from when we started mining in the beginning of the year. That's 75%. That's a lot. So you have to understand that once we get blacks into cryptocurrency, 
there are some mitigated losses that you have to work with. There are some trading things that you have to do. Don't just buy it and hold it. That's a horrible advice. Don't buy anything and just hold it unless it's you know a stock or something like that. Buy it and monitor it once a day, just once a day, every twice a day, check in on it because if it goes from 13 and you bought it at 13 and it drops to now seven, you just lost $3,000. So you have to know when to get in and when not to get in. But I tell everybody right now is a horrible time to get in because you don't know where it's gonna go. It's gonna go up or down and right now, my advice is it will go to the 19,000 limit and potentially break that. So it's a good time to take a high value risk, get in and wait, but you don't have to take any risk in mining it. It just won't, you won't have a Bitcoin tomorrow. It takes months and months and months to get one, but it's better to mine it, have a piece of equipment. Like I'm using my cryptocurrency mine right now uh, to edit documents, type up stuff, use it for video uh, videography. I'm making the video I'm on right now on my cryptocurrency mine. Some people will say that waste a little bit of speed so it doesn't it doesn't basically work as fast as it should, but I don't care because worst case scenario, I have one of the world's best computers in the world. And if cryptocurrency tanks, I still have one of the world's best computers in the world that'll last 15, 20 years. And that's, you know, they're gonna make advances in cryptocurrency, so that will change but I still have one of the best computers in the world. So now that you guys understand those aspects, uh, one of you guys has to eventually understand two things. You're either gonna make money or you're gonna watch other people make money. And that's it. That's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no debate, there's no logic, there's no, it doesn't matter. You're either gonna make money or you're gonna watch other people make money. There's four types of businesses, but there's only two types of people, people that have it and people that don't. There's no in between. There's people that have money and there's people that don't. And they're about this far apart. OK, no symbolic, no logic. I'm just giving you that those people are, are this far apart. They're not this close. They're this close. OK, there's a big, huge gap in between the people that have it and don't. And there's the, the big, huge gap of people trying to get from one side to the other. I don't have it, but I'm trying to get there or I'm going to have eventually get there. I've been lucky enough to get there and I've been lucky enough to try and teach, educate and coach and consult for people on how to get there. So one of the things that every black businessman should have, and I specifically speak to the businessmen because our business women are really doing phenomenal. They need a little bit of help sometimes in some things, but on a general whole, black women make money faster than black men, and they'll do it by ways that black men aren't accustomed to. Great example, if you go to a hundred black women and you say, hey, do you have a job? They may say yes. And then you say, hey, do you have a side hustle or something that you do? And they'll say, well, yeah, I braid hair. Uh, I make T-shirts. I have bags. I sell weave. I, I, and they're all these little bitty things. I do nails. I'm an esthetician. And I have a job at a bank or whatever. Black men have that tenacity for business. We just don't have readily ex uh, access to businesses that are easy to do. So... I, for instance, was a barber in high school, wasn't licensed, any of that. I was just the guy that you could be like, hey, come to my house and cut my hair. It's how I put myself through all of high school and never had to worry about money. So everybody knew me as a barber. You get a fade, you get one, you can get designs, whatever you want. I'll come to the house. Now, barber, barbers make readily money right there. Ten, twenty dollars right on the spot take me 20 minutes. So that's almost 10 to $20 an hour. And I, once you have a regular clientele or customers, it's over. Now, if I say what hustle do black men have outside of being barbers that is legal, you're going to find a very hard road. There's going to be very few brothers that I got to hustle at this. I got to do this unless they have a skilled trade or they're willing to do services. Great example. One brother might be like, hey, you know what? I got a job, but on the weekends, I mow lawns. Hey, I have a job, but on the weekends, I wash cars and detail cars. I got a job, but on the weekends, I paint houses. I have a job. There's very few brothers that know from example that they can do these things. And there's very few brothers that know that these are no-cost startups. In other words, to paint somebody's house costs you nothing. Why does it cost you nothing? 
because they have to buy the supplies. So if you go around and say, hey, you know, you need touch ups, you need blah, blah, blah. Now, a good painter has some of the supplies that he needs, but you could always make the first client pay for it. That's free advice right there. You can always say, hey, you know, to get this done, I don't have the brushes or paint for your house. So I'm going to give you a bill and I'm going to deduct what I'm charging you uh, for the supplies. And you can keep the supplies after I'm done. If you don't, if you want, I'll dispose of them. It's yours. Now, you can do that with every customer. So every customer has to buy their own paint brushes and supplies. You can sell that as a service and say, hey, I'm giving you the paint brushes because even though I painted the house, unless you want me to come back, you might want to do the touch up. And I know it's not it's not really hard, but it's tedious. So here's the stuff. If not, I'll take it and dispose of it. Now, you're not going to actually dispose of it. You're going to keep it. And now you have free products and supplies. It costs nothing to start a paint business. Starts, it costs nothing to go door to door. You don't even have to have a car, to be honest. Uh, it's nice so that you can transport the supplies, but you can always tell the homeowner, have the supplies here when I come back. This is what I do. Give them your spiel. Boom. You can do the whole inside, outside, find realtors to work for it. There's all kinds of little hustles that men can do, but men have not seen other men do. They've watched other races do, and that's a real big thing. They've watched other cultural people do these things. So when you see painters and people doing the yards, they're normally Hispanics. But if you pluck out every Hispanic and put a black person in that neighborhood, in that position, that should be the hustle. That should be the grind. But black men are so busy trying to be like their colonizer, trying to be like their oppressor, that even though they know that they need to do something, right? Even though they know that they need to build, the lack of example for the things to build is accompanied by the lack of direction, know-how, or go get them attitude. A, a bunch of brothers want to make money because there's a bunch of brothers doing all kinds of illegal stuff out here that they have seen. And that's the problem. We can't condone illegal activity uh, and then look at it and be like, why don't they like us? We have to actually look at it from a psychological point of view. The reason why brothers are doing the illegal activity is because that is what they have been cultivated to see. They have uh, been cultivated to be like, it's okay to do this. You can get your hustle on and sell a little drugs. You can get your hustle on and maybe pimp a woman. You can get your hustle on and hustle people, right? You can get over. You want to be a scammer. You could be a scammer because that is what they see. Now, is it to say that there's not black men out here doing these hard labors and tasks and jobs? Of course there is. There's always been Earl down the street that cuts yards. My father does, uh, my stepfather, he cuts yards. He has his own, he's a mason and a construction worker, but he has his own side business when he's off season that he goes and he cuts yards. Or when he's off, he'll get off from doing a labor job at two or three o'clock. And by six to eight o'clock, he'll go and cut his couple customers yards just so he has a couple extra hundred dollars. So, there's all kinds of brothers that are doing these things, but the brothers that are doing them aren't teaching the younger brothers. And that is the disconnect. That is the here, right? That is the gap in between here. The brothers that are these fingers that are doing the little side hustles and doing the blah, blah, blahs are trying to keep their money secret because they don't want anybody to ask for it or they weren't taught to be proud of what they're doing. So when somebody be like, man, you cut yards, ain't that a kid's job? He'd be like, I made a thousand dollars yesterday. And I made ten thousand dollars this week or I made five. They don't teach our brothers to have pride in what they do, which is why I'm always telling people how much money we've generated with cryptocurrency, how good I've done for myself, what I am doing for the community because of how good I've done. Because having pride in your accomplishments is a backbone of your culture. You've never heard anybody say, uh, hey, Mexican, you need to be humble. They don't say brown humbleness. They say brown pride. You've never heard anybody say, hey, Irishman, you need to be humble. They're the fighting Irish, Irish pride, the shamrock, right? Same thing. The only people that actively practice humbleness are some, not all, some Asian cultures practice humbleness because for a long time, they had to be humble about their competitiveness. They had to be humble and polite because there's so many of them that are struggling. And in the sense of a sacrificial generation, their gap is just like ours. There's just a lot more people in their gap. So to be humble was to be respectful of the fact that we may have money, but the next 10 families next to us don't have any. So at a certain point, being humble is great. 
But do you know the other thing that they say about the Asians? They say that they're the most prideful people on the planet. They would die over pride. Literally, it was called Harry Carey, where if somebody committed an act of great uh, dishonoring, dishonoring their pride, their family's pride, their personal pride, their business pride, and they still have a problem with this today, by the way, people would terminate themselves off the planet. So that's how prideful they were. They're, the, they're one of the only races that will, if pride has been sacrificed, they will kill themselves, okay? So we can't even question their pride. Their pride has a whole word for you need to kill yourself because you lost your pride. So now we have to focus on black men and, and some of the problems that we have with black men and how we can fix those problems with black men. Having pride in your accomplishments is fix one, A one, day one. I give you a black a comparison for black women and black men, black women. Black women tell other black women what they're doing because they're always advertising and putting their business out there and they want more customers. So their daughters and their nieces and their, and their aunts and, and their little sisters see Auntie Mabel, right? And they'd be like, Auntie Mabel got that daycare. She watches babies. Auntie Mabel cooks food and plates. Auntie Mabel cuts hair and does this. Auntie Mabel, you know, does nails. Auntie... And then they, once they get big enough, where they like, I got enough, I need a little bit of help. They'll go grab one of their nieces. They'll go grab one of their sisters. They'll go grab one of their whatever, their friends, their girlfriend's kids and bring them in. And they start seeing. So now this next generation gets a whole cultivation of hustle business and hustle nomics and hustle, hustle topic because they get to see how it's done. There's something that we used to do as black men that we don't really do anymore. And you're going to understand that I give you two perspectives. I give you this perspective of the executive in the boardroom and I give you the perspective of from the street, because that's where I came from. South Central L.A., the jungle, the Merck Park, like the bottom. OK, and then I made it up. So we used to have this thing that we used to do back in the day as as as, as the older black men that the younger black men aren't getting. And it used to be called like a balling session. So you'll see it in movies sometimes with drug dealers and you'll see it in movies sometimes of older black, like um, the Bill Cosby movies with Sidney Poitier, where they would walk up, strutting their stuff. You know what? I'm going to show you. Hopefully I don't get flagged. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a scene of Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier walking up to meet each other. And basically what this was, was it's called a flash session. And basically, you just are stunting. OK, so you guys all know what stunting is, but you don't know where it originates from. It originates from a flash session where basically you telling another brother that's getting money how you get money. And he's telling you how he's getting money and what you do at this point. This is the this is the disconnect in this generation. You show each other love. Hey, baby, how you doing? Oh, I made 10 racks last night. I'm real good, baby. I'm doing real fly. I'm trying, you see the new, you see the new, you see the bracelet, baby? You see the, you see the chain? You see the watch? You see the car? Yeah, man, I seen that. Hey, man, what you, what you, what you do yesterday? Man, you know what? Uh, I got this contract and I'm about to be George Jefferson. How you going to do that, baby? Oh, well, I got this contract to open up this business for a bank. So we, we getting all kinds of good bread. I got me a new bike. I got me a, I got the wife a new car. Oh man, we doing good, baby. How you doing? That's what we used to do. And some of us call it jiving. It's a real old term, but it was basically what we call a baller session. It's where black men used to come together and lift each other up on their accomplishments. Now, there have been less accomplishments for young black men, so they can't lift each other up on accomplishments because they don't have any. What have you done today? Play video games? What have you done today? Hustle this girl? What have you done today? Had sex? That's not an accomplishment. Back in the day, you had to walk into the, to the table with something and you had to be impressive so people could be like, good man, give me five, bro. Dap it up. And that's where that comes from. So I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you right now. So this is a movie 
with this isn't a baller scene but i'm just going to show you how everybody's dressed up let me see if i can find it if you guys have never seen this this is called uptown saturday night all right i'm looking for a corny little run <laughs> that's not it hold on <laughs> that's one of my favorite parts in the movie uh he disrespects this dude but uh here goes uptown saturday night all right So the whole premise of the movie, if you've never seen it, it's a really good movie, actually. The whole premise of the movie is the brother wins the lotto. He stunts with his brother. Uh, his brother goes with him, Bill Cosby. He wins the lottery. His brother, he goes, man, I just won the lotto. They live in the projects. He's like, what? He was like, yeah, man, I just won the lotto, $50,000. He said, we got to go. We got to go stunt. We got to go show out tonight for you, baby. You just won the lotto, man. That's good. They get dressed up, they go to the club. They, it's a stunner's club, it's not a real club. It's like a, a house kickback where everybody goes and chills, hangs out, does what they do, and they get robbed at the club. And then he loses, the guy steals his wallet and his lottery ticket was in the wallet. So he didn't cash it in yet and they had to go find the guy and they go through the whole movie trying to get his friend's lotto ticket back so that he can win the lotto. That's how good it was. Now, I just showed you something to see that there was a different spirit of camaraderie. You know, there's a different spirit of how we built black men. And that's what we have to work back to in business. We actually have to build the understanding that black men can build these small little integral things. And that's what we teach people. So we teach them manufacturing, small business startup, online business development, coaching. And um, I just have to go to some of my team so that you guys can understand this. Right. Let me go to my Facebook page and I'm going to show you something. I'm really proud of this because I tell people I don't have to be proud of my apprentice. I only have to marvel in his accomplishments, okay? I'm going to start with my little princess right here. This is my little princess. She is six. She owns this business with her mother and she does the modeling and advertising for the pictures and everything and she picks the clothes, the colors. She's the youngest business owner I know. She's six. She's six, okay? She's six. And we coach, teach, put her on the right path, her and her mother, uh, and I give them as unlimited amount of advice as I can to help with. In fact, she made this dashiki for me, and this is a custom-made dashiki that I have. So me and her, this is a matching outfit that she has with me. So we have the same outfit together. So now I'm going to go to my apprentice. He's 19, just graduated high school. As he's graduated high school, the first thing that he did coming out of high school was start his own real estate empire. So I want you guys to understand. Now, he's an actual genius. He graduated high school at 12, got into college at 15, graduated with his first three degrees. And this year on his 19th year of life, he got his fourth degree. Now, one of the things that I have to say is, I'm trying to look for the post that I made so you guys can see where we're at, is these are some of the accomplishments that we've had. This is us at his graduation. The first thing that he did out of college, before he even got his degree, before this, right, a week or so before he left, was start his own real estate business. Now, his real estate business is a great concept, idea, and development. He started by teaching these classes, 
okay? So he started by teaching a black crypto scholars class. And this was your first real estate property by 25. He teach this while he was in college and then developed uh, through, you know, consulting and coaching and stuff like that, trying to get him in the right direction. He developed his own brand, his own thing. And it all started from the day that we met here. So after he got out of this, he started helping us with the mining project so that you guys see that we've been talking about mining. This is September 15th me and him started working on the first business that we went in together with. And that was him helping us develop the mining projects, the mining manufacturing, and then now getting into now building the mining rigs ourselves. Okay. That led him into wanting to start his own business. And once he started his own business, I swear this picture is somewhere in here. Once he started his own business, he went for the sky. Okay. And this is it. So, what I said is I gave my apprentice, Jamari DeClou, a million dollar dream. He created his own real estate group and team by only 19, about to run to his billion dollar dreams all on the day he graduated college with four degrees. None in business, by the way. I don't have to be proud of him. I'm impressed by him. What I'm giving you this for is not to brag or boast, which is a big problem that we have as black men is we think that other black men are bragging and boasting. So uh, here we go right here. Let me share this so you guys can see the post. Uh, we think that other black men are bragging and boasting, right? But it's really not that. What it is is we have to be proud so that the younger generation sees what to be proud in. He went and took the advice and the direction, but did this on his own. He may have been coached and he may have been pushed and I may have had to work some workarounds to get this in his head because when I met him, he had a job. I had to force him to quit his job to let him know that he's nobody's employee. He's his own boss. And once he understood that he was no that he was never going to be somebody else's employee, that he was his own boss, he developed a great understanding of business. And now at his graduation, he was the only one with a reef made of hundreds and twenties. So he was the only college kid. That reef right here, this thing around his neck, the green thing, that's all money that uh, me and his mother made a reef out of. So he was the only one draped in money walking down the, the, the line. Once he got his degree, he told him he had to leave because he was making $200 a day and he had a meeting to get to. Those kids were still trying to figure out how they were going to pay their student loans and their debt back. He started an empire. That's the difference between direction. And there were plenty of black young gentlemen there that had been graduating from UC Irvine. And there was plenty of black young gentlemen there that were developing or creating an opportunity. But as they create and develop an opportunity because they have an idea, do they have coaching and direction from someone that's giving them the push? They may have a father that's saying, get a good job. They may have a dad in their life that's saying, you need to go find a job now or work somewhere. But they might not have a person in their life like myself that is coaching them and developing them into young geniuses that can go make money. So I want to give you that example because I can use my apprentice for almost any example okay and i want to give you that you can be whoever you want to be in life you really can but being who you want to be is never going to be as good never it's never going to be as good as being somebody great there's a big difference from being who you want to be who you want to be could just be free go lucky happy blah 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 you can't be great and do those things. You just can't. Great comes with sacrifice. Great comes with forgiveness. Great comes with you're going to have to give up some things. You're going to have to do the things that some of your friends aren't doing. Great comes with a lot of struggle and stress. But once you get through the struggle and the stress and you get through all of the tits for tats and you understand and you get to a successful plateau of success, you made it. You get to be like my 19-year-old apprentice. Greatest thing that ever happened. He has a degree, one degree. He has four. So uh, one degree out the four, I don't agree with because there's not a lot you can do with it other than teach. And I don't think he wants to be a teacher at some school. So it's a great degree, but only if you're going to be a teacher. And that was his backup plan. Like worst case scenario, I could be a teacher. That's his worst case scenario. That's somebody's dream job. That's one, the mentality that you need. 
Next thing, we're at his graduation dinner. White lady walks up. He's wearing his his suit and he's wearing his his throw over. And she goes, what do, what do you have a degree in? And he told her. And she says, what are you going to do with that? And then he looked at her. And then proudest moment I've almost ever had. He looked at her and said, I own my own real estate business. Uh, we specialize in developing multi-million dollar deals and sales. And I started that before I left college. So I'm good. And he just, he might drop himself. Because when somebody of a race interferes, and she understood what she did accidentally, I don't even think she meant to kind of flash her white privilege, because she was the waitress. So at the end of that, he was like, by the way, can I get some water? Now, she looked to be like the manager or the owner, but she was still working at the, at the establishment. So being able to throw his superior title and his superior business and say, what I have is a company that does this, and this is why I'm wearing this suit. This is what I do. I just also happen to graduate college. That was something that's a backdrop to the business that I've established that is globally respected. And she was like, oh, that's amazing. At 19, you're doing that. That's uh, exactly. And can you give me some water? That is the type of direction that our black men need to have in pride. But it's hard for them to get that if they don't have an infame or they don't have somebody like me as a chief that's trying to consult, judge, or push them in a direction of excellence because mediocre is really celebrated right now. Mediocracy is the most celebrated. People are getting awards for just showing up to stuff. They ain't even got to win. They ain't even got to compete. You show up, you get an award. Nah, that's not the school I come from. If you lose, you go home sad. So you better win because that winner mentality is what's going to change our community. It's also what's going to change our financial status, our economic growth, everything. So on that note, I'm done. I'm out. I'm going to let Les Brown take us out. So let me find a good Les Brown for you. We're going to let that play for a minute and we are done, fam. Let's see. It's not over till you win. Let's try to stop doubting yourself. If you want something out of life, if you want to change yourself, if you want to acquire something, if there's some goal that you want to reach, that is really not easy as some people will make us feel. That living your dream, changing your behaviors, overcoming negative habits, it's challenging, it's hard. Most people don't know where their fastball is. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, and this year or any other, is to step up. It's to raise the standard. It's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game's all about. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. If you look at somebody who's really successful, you think, wow, I mean, they're, they're so amazing. They're such a genius. You got to dig underneath. You got to remember something. People are rewarded in public for what they've practiced for years in private. If you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people and trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. How much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? When you start thinking about that, we don't know. Most of us don't use the stuff that we have brought into the universe. Stop wasting valuable time. If you want something, you have got to be relentless. You've got to learn how to become resourceful. You've got to learn how to become creative, power, to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure. This is the winner's quality. What this power is, I cannot say. All I know is that it exists and it becomes available only when a man or a woman is in that state of mind in which he or she knows exactly what he or she wants 
and is fully determined not to quit until they find it. There's greatness in you, and you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will, and I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. Most people won't do that. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful?